Stories are the language of the soul. They have a way of penetrating the heart in a way few other influences can. This is why Jesus used storytelling so often to illustrate deeper truths. He knew the power of a story to cut through to the heart. These now famous stories are known as parables. They were Jesus's way to communicate an important kingdom principle in a form that we could remember and that would meet us where we are at. Although the details of these stories were fictitious, the kingdom principles are not. Today, they continue to remind us who God is and what he calls us to be a part of and how much he loves us. Hello, and welcome to the Waukee United Methodist Church. Welcome in the name of Jesus for this time of worship. We're so glad that you're here, and for those of you who might be newer, we would love to connect with you. And a great way you can do that is by heading to our website at waukeechurch.life. This is a great place for all of us to take those next steps. Also, please follow us and engage socially on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Today, we continue in our new worship series as we read short stories by Jesus about the kingdom of heaven. Now, do you have a garden? Do you weed it or do you let the weeds remain? Jesus' short story has us out in the field again. Also, please consider sharing this video. It is a great way to share Jesus with others. Welcome. Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Shame's done all it's stealing. You're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Tell you about my 
Last week we began a, a series from Matthew chapter 13. Jesus' short stories about the kingdom of heaven. And last week we read the, the parable of the sower. Today Jesus has another farming uh, story, this time about wheat and weeds. Hear these words. The parable of the weeds among the wheat. Jesus put them another put before them another t a parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you, did you sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The slave said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned. But gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age, the Son of Man will send his angels and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers and they will throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right, so do you know what? creeping Charlie is. <laughs> that is an aggressive, invasive weed. And I had it at the uh, side of my house a few years ago, uh, back when we lived in Cedar Rapids, before coming here. And it exploded in growth and took over the whole side. And uh, all, those, all those surface root vines tangle, uh, tangle beneath the top layer and surging forward into the new areas, killing the grass, the grass. And I just sort of watched it over, a, a pound of, uh, over an amount of time, just watched it uh, helplessly as it just took over. It covered the entire side uh, of my yard there. And, and, it, and it even then started moving into my neighbor's yard. And, and then it started pushing forward uh, into my front yard, and I thought, I have got to do something about this, right? So I got some weed killer, uh, some spray, ksh, 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 and, and I made sure that the label said that it killed Creeping Charlie. And I just went crazy, spraying everything I could. Ksh, 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 ksh. I'm just spraying it down, right? And it worked, except... It killed all the remaining grass as well. I mean, I hadn't read the, the, the weed killer label uh, as closely enough. I mean, I thought I was just going to get rid of the weeds, but in the end, I killed all that grass too. And not only that, but the grass died and the creeping Charlie came back. And I just stood there in this mess the side of my house, my yard, looking at what I had done. And I could just sense Jesus standing there beside me, looking down uh, at the yard saying, okay, see, that's why it's so dangerous to try and get rid of the weeds. It's so easy to lose the good plant that you want. And I thought, I got to remember this when I preach on Jesus's parable about the weeds among the wheat. And that's where we are today. See, Jesus tells a story saying the kingdom of heaven is like this. It's like a farmer who plants good seed in the field. But an enemy comes during the night when everyone is asleep and plants weeds. 
And the seeds grow, the fruitful plants and the weeds all mixed together. Now, technically, the specific plant pointed uh, to in the Greek of the New Testament is darnel, darnel. Darnel is a, a weed, and when darnel and, and wheat sprout, their little tiny green shapes look so similar. They're almost indistinguishable. And as they grow up, then they become distinct. But at that point then, their roots are so intertwined under the, the surface of the soil. They're so intertwined that a farmer who tries to pull the darnel will also uproot and pull out the wheat. Now, of course, the farmhands, they want to go weed the field. They want to get it cleaned up, right? But the farmer says, no, 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 you can't do that. No, 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 you can't do that because pulling the weeds will also pull up and pull out the wheat. And then the farmer says this, let both of them grow together side by side until the harvest, then they will be separated. So the harvesters, they will first gather the weeds and tie them into bundles to be burned. And then the wheat will be gathered into the barn. Like the, uh, the story last week, the disciples, they asked Jesus to explain this one to them as well. And so Jesus says to them, all right, so the farmer is the son of man. That's Jesus, who plants good seed in the field, that is, growing the followers of the kingdom of heaven in the world. But in the midst of this, the enemy, that is the evil one, the devil, comes under the cover of darkness to plant weeds. The weeds, that is, the, the followers of the evil one who don't belong in the kingdom of heaven. So should the farm hands go in there and pull the weeds? Why, yes, get in there, right? Do some weeding, get that stuff out of the field, rip it out and burn them. I mean, that might be what we expect to hear. If you have a garden or you have some landscaping, you know you got to get in there and you got you to do some weeding. You got to pull the weeds, you got to clean that up, right? But this is sort of the surprise in the parable. Because instead Jesus says, no, don't do any weeding. Leave it. Leave them be. They weren't planted by the Father, but they will be dealt with in due time. But don't try to uproot them, because if you do that, then you're going to be pulling up the good wheat as well. Jesus says, though, there will be a harvest. That is, the consummation of of history, when the angel reapers will finally separate the evil one and destroy them in a furnace of fire. But the children of the kingdom of heaven, the followers of Jesus, they will be gathered into the eternal reign and rule of the Lord our God. This is a battle. It is a battle between Jesus and the followers of the kingdom of heaven against the devil, the devil and, and uh, uh, the evil one and the followers of the evil one. It's a battle between them for the world, the cosmos, the entire cosmos. The problem is the world is ambiguous. We know that. We already know that, right? The world is ambiguous. I mean, there are signs and representatives of the rule of God. But there are also signs and representatives of evil. And they exist side by side at the same time. And until the consummation of history, we can expect wheat and weeds to grow alongside one another. That means it's, it's not our job. It isn't. It's not our job. And we just aren't capable of weeding the kingdom. We aren't capable 
of weeding the wheat and the weeds in the world. We are God's creatures. We are made in God's image, but we are not. We are not God. We are not competent to judge between weeds and wheat. Sometimes we can't even tell the difference between wheat and weeds. Is that wheat? Is that weed? Sometimes we don't even know. We can't even tell. And it's kind of tricky. I mean, in Jesus's short story, the kind of weed that Jesus is talking about, this Darnell, it, it, uh, it looks very much like wheat. It's kind of hard to distinguish between the two, right? I mean, it's even related to wheat. It looks like wheat. It hides out uh, amongst the wheat, but it is poisonous. If too many of the seeds turn up in the bread dough, it can cause problems. It can cause blindness. It can even cause death. So it is risky. It's risky to let these weeds and wheat grow together in the farmer's field. But apparently it is a risk that the farmer, that is God, right, is willing to take in the kingdom of heaven. And so we are called to be patient called to be patient with one another in the world. I mean, who knows? Maybe what looks like a weed to us is actually wheat. And maybe what looks like wheat is actually a weed. And then there's this, right? I mean, what if, what if we are weeds? What if you're a weed? What if I'm a weed? I mean, that's grace right there, allowing weeds to remain, having the opportunity to change, to be transformed, to become wheat. That's grace. The opportunity, have the opportunity to become wheat. And you have that opportunity all the way up until the harvest, until the consummation of history. Jesus says, it is better to allow the weeds than to try and remove them and accidentally kill some wheat. It's better to let children of the kingdom and children of the darkness grow up together. We are called to be patient and learn to live through such ambiguity. Which really makes it messy, right? <laughs> Things get really messy, doesn't it? I mean, but that is the reality. Sometimes it's Sometimes it's hard to judge another human, and we are complex human beings with many shades of gray. We're just not all this or all that. We're not, we're not pure. Back in the, uh, the year 303, the, it was called the Great Persecution. The Great Pers Persecution began under the Roman Emperor Diocletian. And it was the last major persecution by the Romans, and it was severe. Diocletian, he ordered the burning of Christian books and churches. He had promised not to spill any blood, but in actuality, the Diocletian persecution turned out to be extremely violent. Christians were beheaded, they were crucified, they were thrown to wild beasts, they were put in charge, in, they were put in chains and, and in fire, and, and given many other kinds of sort of torture. And in this sort of terrible thing, this persecution, there were Christians who fell away from the faith. And the Christians who fell away were called the lapsed. They had lapsed. Some of these people were also called tradatores. Tradatories, who under the threat of death and torture gave up the Bibles to the Romans. Tradatories, that's how we get to that word traitors, right? Because this was a devastating thing, a, tra a devastating sort of uh, traitoring uh, here. It was terrible because there were so few Bibles. I mean, this was a long time before the printing press some 1,200 years, uh, it took 1,200 years. I mean, the printing press did not uh, come into existence for some 1,200 years. And so the scriptures, they had to be hand copied. And it took a long, long time to do that. And there were so few of them. And, you know, you had to be quite wealthy 
in order to have one anyway. And so after the persecution, some of these people who lapsed wanted to come back to the church. The theological understanding in the early church was that there's no salvation outside of the church. So what do you do? Do you let these traitors back in the church after they, after they gave up our rare and precious scriptures and ran away from the church to avoid the persecution and death? So some bishops worked hard for us to have a, hard, to, for us to have a, a pure church. They worked hard on that. I mean, they didn't believe that the traditori should be allowed to come back into the church. I mean, the traditories, they weren't pure, right? And if anyone was accepted back, boy, they had to go through the rigorous thing, the whole process of conversion and be baptized again. And in the early church, uh, then, you know, that wasn't a quick thing, right? It, it took a couple of years for that process. And this is, this is how it happened for a couple of, uh, of years. Longer than that. But about 100 years later, one of our most important ancient bishops, Augustine, he said, he said, people should be welcomed back into the church. And they didn't have to be baptized again because he said the church isn't pure. The world isn't pure. The church isn't world. <laughs> The world isn't pure. The church isn't pure. Augustine understood the church to be mixed in its composition. And he compared it to this parable, uh, Jesus' short story of the weeds and the wheat. He said, we are a mixed church. We're not pure. There are weeds and there are, then there are wheat, right? There, there are weeds and wheat, children of the evil one and children of the kingdom. And we grow together. Don't worry, but don't worry. The kingdom of come has come. It has already come. The Lord is king. And a day of reckoning, a judgment day will come. And the weeds and the wheat will be separated at judgment, at the consummation of history. So what does this mean for us? What does this story tell us about the kingdom of heaven? Well, first, former missionary Doug Ruffel says, very interesting, he says, nowhere does the Bible say that the community of faith is to build the kingdom of God. We are invited to see it and enter it and receive it or proclaim it, but never are we asked to build it. Because the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, it is not the work of our efforts, something that we do, something that we construct. The kingdom of heaven already exists. It drew near to us in Jesus. That's what Jesus said. The first thing he began to uh, proclaim when Jesus started preaching publicly, the kingdom of heaven has come near, is at hand, right? It's the work of God's hand. Or we might say the farmer planting the good seed. It's about the farmer, right? So we don't build it, and the church isn't the same thing as the kingdom of heaven. The tool, the church, it is a tool. The church is a tool for the kingdom. We are a mixed, messy group in the church, just like in the world. We're much too sinful as human beings for the church to be the kingdom of God. See, that's not the same thing. The church is not the same thing as the kingdom of God. The church, we are a tool. We have a mission, right, for the kingdom. And as a tool for the kingdom that has already come, it's, it's not necessary for disciples, followers of Jesus, to try and rid the church or the world of the enemies of the gospel. We don't have to try to keep or create a pure church community. The kingdom of heaven, the, the, the kingdom of God, is God's business. God doesn't approve of evil, and God will take care of it at the appropriate time, but we are not the ones. 
even as a tool for the kingdom of heaven to do the weeding for the kingdom. The church is not a hoe, right? The farmer says, pulling the weeds would pull out the wheat too. So, so let them both grow together until the harvest. And then they will be separated, but not by the church, not by the followers of Jesus, but by the angels, those messengers that God sends. And of course, this can get difficult and, and messy, right? But we know this. Jesus tells us, the wheat endures despite the presence of weeds. The wheat endures. The wheat that is the righteous who embody right relationship with the Lord our God and with other people too. So we can wait patiently because the Lord God is in control. God will take care of everything. And so we can be patient. And yet there are a lot of weeds around, right? But there will be a harvest, a time of judgment. Weeds and wheat will be separated. Wheat gathered into the barn and others condemned. It's interesting, too, that when the weeds start to spring up with the wheat, the farm hands, they ask the farmer a question. They ask the farmer if he's responsible. I mean, they didn't do it. Did he do it? Was the farmer responsible for the bad seed, for the evil in the field, in the world? Nope. As we read out the parable and the interpretation, the farmer didn't cause the weeds. That is, God isn't responsible for the evil in the world. There is evil in the world. But there will be a harvest, a judgment, the consummation of history. At the end of the story, at the end of the age, the Son of Man will send the angels and they will collect out of God's kingdom all causes of sin and scandal and all evildoers. And the angels will throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Uh, weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of our Heavenly Father. Let anyone with ears listen. Are you a son or daughter of the kingdom? Do you want to be counted as children of the kingdom of heaven? I invite you to take a little time and, and reflect on, on that because this is an invitation if you have not accepted that in invitation yet. Decide how you will respond when it's time for the harvest. Do you want to be counted as weeds or wheat in the kingdom of heaven? Let anyone with ears to hear listen. Please pray with me. Gracious God, sower of life, this world you created is full of complex stories and complicated histories histories that you know so well, epics that have played out and carried us to this moment. You know the names of all our generations, for you were there in each story of falling away and turning home, in our long years of wandering, and in the shining moments when we recognize your presence and discover and rediscover the grace that leads us to worship you. In this very moment, you know if we are sons or daughters of your kingdom. You know our hearts, and if we want to be counted among the children of the kingdom of heaven. For Lord, we are born into sin and continuously fall short of your expectations for us. As we continue to strive for your forgiveness and try to earn your grace, remind us that your grace is freely given and our blessed assurance is found by the gift of your son hung on the cross as our eternal sacrifice. Please hold us in your grace, Lord, and count us among your children for we want to be counted as wheat in the kingdom of heaven. We pray for the church and for our congregation that in the field of this world, we may be the good seed that grows into your harvest. We pray for your whole creation that is eagerly waiting, longing to be set free from everything that holds it in bondage. We pray for earth's people 
its nations and leaders, that all may come to know the selfless ways that lead to peace. We pray for all youth, many struggling to understand the call of Christ or are totally deaf to it. May their hearts be strangely warmed and may they turn around and grow in your light. We especially pray for our third graders who are presented your word. Walk with them and provide them with understanding and knowledge for their journeys of discipleship. We pray for those who are ill and for those who are facing death, that they may find hope in the faith that the sufferings of this moment will not compare with the glory to be revealed to them. We pray for all who flee from paths by which they are haunted. We pray for all who feel abandoned by a future for which they had hoped. We pray earnestly for all who do not know they are loved and chosen. We pray for those who we know and love, that they may truly feel the bond between them and you, and that wherever they go, you are with them. We pray for ourselves, our families, those we love, and so many others we lift up to you, Lord, silently in our hearts and minds. Almighty God, help us to trust that you are at work in every mingled heart and every conflicted community. Nourish the life that you plant within us, that we might keep seeding the world with your truth and your grace. In the name of Jesus, who gave his life out of love for the world, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, and who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Hello, thank you for connecting with us. Here are some next steps for our faith journey. We are holding a meeting today after worship in the classrooms for parents of kids ages pre-K through fifth grade to discuss this year's children's ministries. If you can't make the meeting but still have thoughts, please contact Director of Discipleship, Drew Klein. The Table is hosting its next meal on Monday, September 25th. It's tailgate themed with walking tacos. They still need several items to be donated, so check the Welcome Center to sign up to donate food or to help serve. We are excited to host October Feast, a church-wide potluck, on Sunday, October 8th, after worship. Bring your favorite dish to share and the recipe if you're willing to share that, and enjoy some time with fellowship with the congregation. We will provide tableware and a spot to plug in your crock pot, and we hope you will join us for this fun food and fellowship. Finally, you're welcome to give an offering today in person in the offering box located outside the doors of the Multi Ministry Center or through the Waukee Church uh, uh, website at waukeechurch.life or directly through the Realm app. Thank you for your support of the mission and ministry of this church. I'm Michaela Craigmell. I'm the administrative assistant here. You can contact me in the office at any time. And please don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Thank you for being with us today and uh, receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.